I'm opening. We have an eye, part of a nostril, two teeth. Hmm. One of the teeth has a small cavity. Close call, folks, but I think we got here just in time. Presented by Maria Menounos and Kevin Undergaro. This is Anatomy of a Movie. In-depth discussions and breakdowns of various movie titles. And now that you've seen the movie, let the dissection begin. How epic. Well, epic. Guys, I'm so excited. I love it. <laughs> That's the voice of Sarah <laughs> Stratton. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hello, everybody. We're here for Thor 2, or better yet, Thor, the Dark World that is properly titled. I am your host, Phil Svitek, joined alongside Sarah Stratton, who's Hi, very excited. again. Sorry. Uh, Dimitri Panos. Hello, everybody. And John Comfort. Hello, everybody. Um, a lot to discuss with this movie. We're going to try to obviously address as many aspects as we can. Um, you know, we try to be as in-depth as we possibly can but you know as we talk about this movie we have to obviously talk about the avengers universe mm -hmm. the whole marvel universe and comic books in general movies all yeah. that stuff so we might not you know we might not cover everything unless we had 20 hours and, even then <laughs> and, I, and i'm gonna and i'm gonna right right off the bat say uh in some of my facts i may be inaccurate or, or you know so Hey, be gentle, be kind, but you there's the so caveats much. on already. And if yeah. we get yeah. something just wrong, just tell us the right answer. So yes. we can be constructive, can not destructive. That's right. Uh, <laughs> most of us here are more DC guys. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. So that so. should be, that should be known. So uh, perhaps that gives Don't us take some offense more. To that. <clears throat> yeah, it gives us more of an objective view, perhaps. And uh, also in the booth, we have Marissa Serafini, who will be chiming in every now and then. Hello, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> that was I'm so demure. That was awesome. Um, so you know, let's talk about the writing of this. Um, We're not going to start with overall impressions? Everyone like Sarah, liked would it. you like to start with overall <laughs> impressions? She's chomping at the bit. She wants to talk right away about what this movie. Play. I want to hear what she has to say. Me too. Go ahead. I do now. I Jump in. Spot. I want to say that I really love this movie. Um, Thor is probably one of my favorite superheroes um i do have some critiques there are some plot holes there are some issues but overall i loved it i'll buy it i'll watch it again and again um i want to retitle it first of all because everyone's calling it thor 2 but i want to retitle it thor the dark universe universe because i just feel like that encapsulates more of the film um but i'll save everything else for later except for that i'm excited to talk about it why, why, why don't we be fair okay. to everybody? Dimitri, would you like to have uh, yeah, well, I'm excited to talk about this, too. Uh, I, I'm a fan. I'm a really big fan. Uh, I don't know at what point, I mean, you know, what Marvel has been able to accomplish oh, yeah. with these movies is is something that that, that is – it's truly staggering um, when you break it down because mm -hmm. it's something that DC – I think they're just starting to realize mm -hmm. that they can do this – um and you know when you take a, a character like Thor or actually I'll just go I'll just start from the from my beginning what Marvel has done is amazing because when you think about it when you go back to Iron Man was the first one the first movie that comes out and you had to say at that point Iron Man was a risk or a gamble at the very least you had at the time this character he's a B-level character in a sense he wasn't Spider-Man. He's not the X-Men Wolverine or the Fantastic Four. He's Iron Man. So you're making a movie, a full-length feature movie, and you're getting Robert Downey Jr. to play Tony Stark, who at the time he was starting to mount his comeback. He was in Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, which is great. Awesome movie. But again, at the time, not proven box office. He'd been out of it for a while. And then for, for a director, you pick Jon Favreau, who biggest hit at the time was Elf. He did Made... Uh, um, Zathora was probably the closest film that he had to an action movie so you're putting all these elements together and you're like what am I going to get out of this movie and let's put it to you this way if the movie didn't succeed we wouldn't be here talking about Thor the Dark World sure. um, so it worked you continue to go on then Marvel comes up with these great ideas we're going to make Iron Man 2 there was another Hulk movie in there and then you have Thor. And again, Thor had no right. I mean, I'm thinking Thor. This is a Nordic god 
whose weapon is a hammer, and he swings it around to that fly. That ain't no like, ordinary right. hammer, though. But, I mean, how do you make yeah. him into a likable... It's named. How the do you make him into a, a likable character? Yeah, and how do you make him into a likable character? I like, how do you take this Nordic god and, you know, and they made it work in that first Thor. And then Captain America, and then, of course, the expendables of superhero movies, you make the Avengers. Yeah. And the Avengers is huge. And each movie led up to, the, and they call it, Marvel calls it phase one, mm -hmm. right up to the Avengers. And you like the characters even more. So now we've already had, they're into phase two. We've got um, Iron Man 3 has been out already, uh, which was uh, directed by Shane Black, uh, who wow. worked with Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, written mm -hmm. and directed by. And now we have Thor The Dark World. We're, next year we're getting Captain America. And, you know, when you come into Thor The Dark World, I'm like, this movie is what it should have been. It, it, it's great. One thing... For me, one of my favorite aspects, it wasn't deeply rooted on Earth. Um, you know, Thor lives in this, it's it's otherworldly. It's a big sandbox, and they play it in that sandbox. And that is one of the reasons I love this movie. Chris Hemsworth, who we already talked about with Rush, you know, he plays the character great. The actors that they have in this are really good. Um, so, yeah, I just, big fan of Thor, big fan of what Marvel does. I think they're fantastic. Uh, they get it for mass audience consumption, action, just good old fun movies. Um, well, for me, what, what I like, you know, you, you speak of, um, you speak of that they had to, you, you know, they use this world. He's an over the world. I think, mm -hmm. you know, I like that because obviously it fulfills that. Mm -hmm. But it was also from a script perspective a necessity because, okay, with the Avengers, what happened was on Earth. Mm -hmm. And then if it's more happening on Earth, how can you not say, hey, where's Tony Stark? Where's all the people to help, you know, Earth? Whereas if you're dealing with an um, out-of-world problem, then, okay, it's only Thor who can really do it. Mm -hmm. You know, or sure. you buy it. So I yeah. like that aspect of it, John. It was good. Lots of fun. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I do want to throw one more thing to a nod to Marvel. Um, they have a challenge where I think that a lot of the Marvel heroes, it's probably debatable, they go through a major character arc in mm. their first movie. And then you're left with this struggle on, like, where are you going to get those levels in the next? And you kind of have to get them from your villains or from someone else. Because in, in, in the first Thor, you saw him become a man, become the guy who sure. deserves to be king. You've already seen that. You already have who he's in love with. Yeah, Like, you're given so much. And they have that on a lot of levels. It's the same with Captain America, um, you've got a little more variety in Iron Man and in well, the Hulk because they have the. But yeah, when you take on relationship. Thor and you compare them to like the heroes like Batman and Superman who are have always had these ongoing movies, it's because they have these two identities that they're battling against. Thor is Thor. He walks into the room. He can't. He's not hiding anything. Right. So to make a movie and people keep people engaged is really impressive when they've already established who he is. Yeah, no, and, and again, you're right. That That's to Marvel, to Marvel Studios' credit. Mm -hmm. They're able to make this character who, you know, I mean, on the written page, if you look at some of the older Thor comics, it's, I don't, for me, it was a little, this is why I was a DC guy. To me, he looked a little silly. Um, but in the movies, I think they make a great character. But, you know, I mean, I think that the characters can have their earthly adventures without mm -hmm. having to interact. You know, the Avengers are brought in on, on certain types of situations, just like you can make, you know, Superman and Batman movies without, I mean, they're both based in Earth. They don't have mm -hmm. to cross paths, although we're finally going to get that at some point, I think. But, you know, they, I'm just glad that they, every movie up until this point, for the most part, was deeply rooted in Earth. Yeah, there was some other otherworldliness, mm -hmm. but this one, a majority of it was out in space, out in the other galaxy, out in the nine realms, and that's what I really, you know, it's like they played in that sandbox and they had a great time. I yeah. feel like they have to have a. Sorry, Phil, go ahead. I yeah. feel like I'm going to end up saying a lot, so I should have yeah. stopped. Well, uh, you know, in terms of in terms of script and things like, I mean, it, it works to their advantage, but also it hinders them, you know. And I want to talk about this script specifically, but a lot of people said. Um, a lot of the fans for Captain America and for the f first Thor, they felt it was a slight rush job just to get to the Avengers, mm. you know? And so it, it can be 
great, but it can also hinder you because now you have timelines that you absolutely have to hit, um, and you don't necessarily have the creative creative uh, space to be like, okay, well, how do we really do this? And I think with this one, there was so much of it um, that they were able to get right because I think they had a little bit more time rather than like, okay, we got to get to the Avengers now. Right. Uh, okay, I could see that. I could see that. I feel like it's such kudos to them though. They must have like a team that literally goes, okay. We have all of these characters with their own film. We have all of our Avengers films. Oh, wait, we're going to add in our TV show. Okay, everyone has to read all these scripts and make sure they all line up. Okay, everything works. Check yeah, out. This happened. What's exactly the problem? What like, which, by the way, you know, in terms of t- you, you talk, I don't know if you're speaking to the Netflix deal. Is that what you were talking about? No, I'm more of talking about how, like, for instance, in this film, although there are holes I'm sure we'll get to, they even mention, um, it's, I think it's Natalie Portman's line where she's like, wait, you went to New York and you didn't see me? Yeah. yeah. Like, that's just being conscious of you have all these people managing mm. these high budget films, but still trying to communicate with each other mm. a little bit and be like, guys, wait, when's your film taking place? Oh, well, right. A couple months after this. Like, that's a lot. And with so many other things going on. I think it's impressive. Yeah, and I think the Marvel Studios, I think the gentleman's name is Paul Feig, mm-hmm. who, who had said he, you know, he's always being credited as being the mastermind mm-hmm. to this. And if you really break it down, Captain America, which came later, is actually, should be, if you're going to view in chronological, if you're oh, going to yeah. geek mm-hmm. out and yeah. nerd out, Captain America is the first one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when you look at Captain America too, there's another movie. I mean, by all rights, really shouldn't have, I mean, it's a time period movie takes place in the 40s or it is very jingoistic but yet joe johnston and the writers they made it work and they bring in you know the tesseract which is what is leading up to the mm-hmm. avengers and yeah it was just it's just again i think they've woven they've they've created the marvel universe cinematically uh in in a pretty much a very perfect way for me I, I i love these movies i love going to them and i don't even read the comic books you know for, I, I don't read i don't know the backgrounds of thor i don't know most of their arch nemesis uh, who these people well, are you know uh but i don't have to i just mm-hmm. go and i love the movie by the way i wanted to you know i want to say a pun it seems things are aligning perfectly oh <laughs> the Marvel universe. Um, but it's inter- you know in terms of thor for me what's interesting is that okay he's a comic book character but but um before that He's he's a myth, a legend. You know, yeah. y- you have uh, the Greeks with their gods, the mm-hmm. Romans, and you know this is a Nordic god. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they did go to Greek mythology for this this movie a little bit. I mean, I mean, I know a little bit about the comic book world of Thor, not a ton, but I had never heard of the. I keep pronouncing it wrong. Ether. Yeah, Ether. Yeah. I keep Ether. pronouncing Ether. it wrong. So I looked that up because I was like. Ah, what is that from? And that's pulled from Greek mythology. Mm-hmm. I believe it's like the air or something or the power of Olympus or the air air they breathe or something about Zeus. Like mm-hmm. that is Greek. And I think that they do add a lot of those elements, even in like you talked about how this really takes place on Asgard. And yeah. Asgard as a city mm-hmm. in sci-fi is wonderful. It's probably yeah. one of my favorite magical yeah. worldly places to me it's like you get atlantis meets um rivendell and like lord of the rings oh yeah that's a, that's a great way to a put a little it. bit of olympus Absolutely. in there it so i do like that they bring in all those elements of different myths different legends and they kind of apply them in the different layers of thor yeah i uh, know I, there's I, so I, many I, commonalities and myths through whatever mm-hmm. ethnicity or heritage you come from there's all kinds of similar myths yeah, for and, reasons and, and I it's think in our dna through almost all superheroes yeah you know in a sense you can you know you can attach batman to, sure. to, to a mythical creature or mm-hmm. mythical mm-hmm. person but yeah thor is so wrapped up in you know that you know that mythology and and but i think that's what makes his character anyways movie wise to me he's he's just a fantastic character and i love it when we're on asgard and i love the whole family thing and Mm -hmm. again thor is uh the way that they play him is he's had it you know he's 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 he has heart he's this Mm -hmm. big guy but you know i like i said i think for chris hemsworth this role is fantastic for him 
You know, uh, it's too bad he should get in better shape, though. Like, he should. Yeah. You're right. Just, <laughs> like I really wanted him to put his shirt back on. Bit, I wasn't you know. okay with he that. He doesn't quite look like a Nordic guy. Uh, it, that was you know it, was CG. it was CG. It yeah. was CG. He's right. actually like my girth, and he's CG. Yeah. 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 Kind of, kind of like Bilbo. He has a six pack. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. more like a twelve pack. Mm -hmm. Um, that he it, drank. Shoot, what was I gonna say? Uh, I don't in, know what we're going in, to in say. In terms of. What, was this about acting? Was this about overall plot? Now I'm thinking about, about Chris Hemsworth and his abs. Yeah. Why we got to? Why <laughs> we got distracted? We distracted Phil. No, but I, you, I'm you, trying to think of well, that. Well, like, I'll say something because we were talking <laughs> about the story, and and one of the things I really enjoyed, and we, we've kind of touched on it, but because it was otherworldly, it was nice when they brought it to a, and and I use this term advisedly, a human level, so we could relate to it. Because mm -hmm. even though he's a Nordic god or whatever. He's still struggling with how he relates to his brother, and you know he does. You know he has a role to fulfill with being the king. Doesn't you know and has to. He's got all that conflict. So there's all these uh, uh, conflicts that he has to deal with that we can relate to as humans because yeah. they're the same things that we go through. And to the to the script, I think you know this kind of applies on all levels of the film. But you know, obviously, it starts with the script, and it's Robert Downing Jr. who who said this of Marvel that. They're going for their core fans, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And and us, even though we're not Marvel fans, we're not necessarily comic book readers, yeah. the fact that, you, you know, you go for that core audience first and then it expands right. to eventually mm -hmm. us and eventually more. And that's that's been the success of these movies, whereas I think certain franchises fail because they right. try to go, oh, we got to get everybody. You know, uh, yeah. it's going to appeal to this demographic and this. Sure. Yeah. They, uh, you know, they make a good story. Yeah. yeah, I think that's and that's one of the things I really appreciate that because mm -hmm. I'm not a comic book fan. I, I don't I don't dislike them. I just right. don't read them. Sure. Uh, but I, I remember as a child, I remember Iron Man and mm -hmm. for some reason Thor were ones that I was aware of and liked. Mm -hmm. But I ha I haven't read them, a and I don't even particularly watch uh, all the films. Mm -hmm. and, and not because I again, it's not because I dislike them. I just uh, there's I, a lot I, of them. There's a lot of films, and there's and a I, lot. <laughs> and but but I like the the films. I don't have to. I think that what I was my point I'm making is that you don't have to know all that stuff. And even though you're not, you may not be a core uh, audience. You can enjoy these films because they speak to many different things, and they're available to other audiences while still capturing that core audience. Right. That's what works for me. And yeah. I think that what that is, what that planning is is that Phil's right. They start with who has already been fans and they mm -hmm. add in these little Easter eggs big, or thank yeah. you sure. of things that do appeal to the people who are the hardcore fans, mm -hmm. but they don't make that the center of the story. Sure. The center of the story is the thing that we the general public can relate to. Right. It's the action or the romance or mm -hmm. the characters. And like in this specific film, I thought it was very interesting that they really put up a lot of the characters as like this person kind of versus this person. So you've got Thor versus Loki. You've got Jane versus Sif. I wrote this down. Um, why am I looking up here? Uh, you've got Malachi versus Odin. Like you can kind of compare and contrast them each on like personal levels, decision levels, like who they are, where they've been. Um, specifically, like when you take the Dark Elf Malachi and you compare him against Odin, and there's a line in there where Anthony Hopkins or Chris Hemsworth asks his father, um, what's the difference between him and Malachi? Malachi? And Odin goes, well, I'm going to win. <laughs> and in your mind, you're like, okay, so there's, there's no difference. So you are pretty much the same person right now. And the, how they set these people up, and I really liked that character-wise. That's all I got to say about that. <laughs> Um, let's move on to the casting of this, you know, because again, uh, script writing again, it, it, you know, we kind of, for, you can really go and can talk about the Marvel universe and how it kind of is in that way. But, um, what I love is that everyone kind of is on board in terms of all these actors to also be part of that universe, right? right. Uh, from Robbie Downing Jr. to being, uh, Iron Man and now, uh, with Thor, these guys from the first movie to this movie. And, you know, you mentioned Anthony Hopkins, obviously Chris Helms. I mean, all of them, Natalie Portman. And, mm -hmm. You know, I, I hate when, when things do get recast. Like so in Iron Man? <laughs> Which is, I mean, the thing is, well, if kind Rody. of the actor. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah. <laughs> like in Iron Man. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, if some of the actors had had their way in this one, they would have had to be recast. Because I believe I read that Natalie Portman didn't want to do Thor 2. 
But she um, was so good. Well, I, I mean, usually they sign them for the three movies anyway. So exactly. Yeah. They know they're she, making no, them, exactly. So. She couldn't get out because of the contract. Yeah. yeah. Like, she tried. Yeah. And if they had replaced her, like, people would have been so mad. I would have been really mad. So, yeah, and, but, but and to job. her credit, I mean... Well, I mean, the none of that comes across in any of her mm-hmm. interviews. No, absolutely, she's a pro. But right. she, they could have made the story work because he could have, you know, he could have been destitute and you know all that kind of sure. sort of lovesick and just you know pining and mourning and all that. They kind would of just stuff. recast her. And, <laughs> well, yeah, they could, could have done that, but it, 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 it could have made it could have been yeah. great motivation for him. Is what I'm saying. They could have used it if they, right. they, you know, if she yeah. would die or whatever. So, so it would have been it would have been fine. And she was great. I mean, you know, you speak of that. She's speaking well in the press about this movie, and also for me. I think I think just on screen she delivered. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's it's great to know that professionally. Mm-hmm. Okay, whether she not wants to be here or not, you know, maybe not. But mm-hmm. at least she's still delivering. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like, most people you know, would. Other people in like in Kickass too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> should we talk about there? Who oh. didn't speak well in the public anyway? Yeah, no. I mean, you know, you know, we, when you talk about the cast, we already talked about. You know, Chris Hemsworth. I think is great. Um, but you know, we gotta. How can we not talk about Tom Hiddleston? Uh, everyone's talking. Okay, about Tom Hiddleston. I mean, oh, but. My this is what this is for Marvel for the fans. This is the guy you want. Like you want an actor to be like Tom Hiddleston because he has embraced this to the point where he will not he'll show up to almost any convention. He mm. was in he was in Korea. He did the Gangnam style dance. I mean, he plays to the he plays to the fans. Mm. He seems like this great down to earth guy. Um You know, I remember seeing him, you know, you see him in the Avengers and you see him in the first Thor, you know, and he's great. And then he was in War Horse. He had a he had a bit more horse. And you're like, oh, wow, this guy's really good. He's a good actor. And, you know, he just comes off as number one. He's become a fan favorite. Mm -hmm. He's made Loki or, you know, I think. And Loki is a fan favorite villain Mm -hmm. by the way that he portrays him. But outside of that. I think everywhere he goes, he is so endearing to the crowd. Uh, at Comic Con, the guy took the stage before the panel comes in behind him, and he came on as Loki. <laughs> I mean, most actors will not. No, no, like no. if you asked Harrison Ford to go out as Indiana Jones, he'd say, "I'm out." You know. Or you'd have to pay him an awful lot. <laughs> uh, he'd say, "I'm out." You know, no. But this guy will do that sort of thing because he knows the importance. He loves. It, it appears as if he loves to sign autographs. Mm-hmm. You know, once it's all said and done, I don't. I don't know. I only see him mm-hmm. when he's uh, you know uh, on camera. But he, he did. Uh, did anybody see the great little uh, comedic commercial he did that was a takeoff of the AT and T commercials with the guy and he has like the like the the, the kindergarten kids. No. Oh yeah yeah. Did you see the commercial he did? He did one of those kind of commercials. Mm -hmm. And he's like, so, you know, he's the center of attention. Who's your favorite character? Thor or Loki? And they all go, Thor! And he's like, why Thor? She goes, this one girl goes, well, he has a hammer. He doesn't even have to use his hands to knock people down. And he just pushes her off the beanbag. He goes, my hand. (laughs) He's like, you know. And those kind of things, Mm -hmm. most actors just shun. But he's there. He doesn't. I'm sure he gets paid for it. But he seems to do it with real zeal and pleasure. And as a fan, I love that. I love that. You know, and Tom Hiddleston, I ever see you. First one's on me. He's mm-hmm. great. Love him. <laughs> I'm a fan of the actor and of the character. Yeah. Um, he's done such a great job. And, oh, goodness. Loki is such a complicated, fun person to follow. Mm-hmm. Because, and probably because of Tom's acting, you can really argue the side of, well, I know why he's like this. And yeah. that maybe he really is a good person somewhere inside. He has just these layers where you're like, wait, w- why did you save them? Did you save them? What are you doing? Like, he leaves yeah. you in so much confusion yeah. about what his real motivations are, where he's coming from. Because the very first Thor, when he sets up, it's all supposed to be a trick. It's He's supposed to be the trickster dog. It's Chris trickster god. He wasn't maliciously trying to get the frost giants to get the tesseract back in the first film it was all a trick and then it escalated into like his isolation abandonment lying all of this but he's still and then in this we get the attachment to his mother how he really feels about yeah. his family like it's such a fun confusing character i know that tom described it as 
being a firecracker. He's yeah. like the firecracker of the film where you he's really layered, never know when it's going to be. He's a layered out. villain. So, mm-hmm. the, so you think he was uh, honest when he was saying all that about how he really feels about his family and stuff? You don't think it was all a ruse to get to the throne like he did at the end? Or I think that there's elements. I mean, specifically, I think that he really did love his mother. He 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 put up the facade of pretending that mm-hmm. he wasn't destroyed, and then he was. Mm-hmm. Um, he wasn't planning on showing that. I don't think. I don't think that was part of his master plan. I think he planned. I think he thinks that Thor's kind of can be stupid, mm-hmm. and he thought he was just going to believe his illusion. And the fact that he saw through it right. was impressive. Because and then in the throne room, sorry, mm-hmm. no, no, go ahead. There's like three interesting points where he does mention he he's obviously cloaked as Odin, mm-hmm. and he still tells Thor that he kind of is proud of him. Mm-hmm. On top of that, he gives Thor the ability to leave, which is because he wanted it. And he says, mm-hmm. thank you, which mm-hmm. is the whole, like, oh, uh, you're kind of evil. But he lets him keep the hammer. Mm-hmm. He didn't have to do that. If mm-hmm. he really wanted to strip Thor of everything, you'd be like, okay, you're not a protector of Asgard anymore. You're still on treason. Lay your hammer over mm-hmm. there and leave. Mm-hmm. Like, he didn't need to do any of that. So there are layers mm-hmm. and well, there are mixed motivations. You know, it's it's really interesting because I think a question that can be asked uh, that I have um, is that is is this movie about Loki? I mean, usually in screenwriting, you know, it, because this has been a it's been somewhat of a d- debate about Star Wars. Mm-hmm. You know, we we take Star Wars as it being about Luke Skywalker, but when you're screenwriting, the the first main character to appear is usually the one that you're going to focus on, and in Star Wars, it's Darth Vader. Right. And then when it ends up with episodes one through three and everything, it ends up, in a sense, being about Darth Vader. More, you, you know, you can make the argument even which, more so. Than which one are we Scar- talking about? We're talking about, which, well, we're talking, yeah. oh, you Star call, Wars. I'm talking about, I'm sorry. I'm old school. I call Star Wars a new hope, just okay. Star Wars. Okay. But you the can first call character. the name like on. Anakin pretty much through everything. Sure. But, but in this one, your first character that you're main character that you're coming on to is seeing is it, it begins with loki mm-hmm. it ends with loki mm-hmm. and you know the end it, oh, there's a lot of loki in between too a lot, so. of, a lot of loki in between, <laughs> a lot of loki in yeah. between so e-i-e-i-o um it could be argued that this could be like a loki movie um i would say I, that the, one of the things i like about the way loki character is written is that is that you could make the argument that no no all everything he said about his mom and all that stuff was a ruse because he knew he was playing him the whole <laughs> time and he was just trying to get to the throne or you could absolutely agree with sarah that no no no, i think that was that was the, those were those real moments that he allowed him to see and, and you could go either way with that and and i think you could be fine e- either way and it works either way it doesn't really right. matter but uh, that's what i like about him you can't tell he is that yeah. trickster god I, and i like to believe i <clears throat> i do believe that he actually did have an emotional connection with his mom because there was the scene because of the magic and then well, the illusion we got earlier of him creating her well correct? well that but i think after he had found out like when he's in his cell mm-hmm. he he literally has an outburst yeah. And he throws all the furniture, mm-hmm. you know, and I do think that there was a connection. Well, I absolutely think he feels about it. I absolutely feel yeah. like. But, but he can but use it I, to his advantage. Is that I'm what saying is the next scene when you see um, uh, Thor come up there. Right. And he has that image that's fake. Right. And, and Thor calls him on it. That could have all been a ruse. Another ruse. Right. To I get think, out. You know, it's funny that you say that because mm-hmm. it's, um, okay, was Thor really the star of Dark Word? If you ignore the Dark Elf prologue, Loki's the first character to appear on screen mm-hmm. and the last character to appear on screen. If you ignore the end credits. Right. Over, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, over the course of the film, the protean trickster shifts motivation so frequently everybody generally agrees to stop trusting him. I don't trust yeah. you. You know, even so, he manages to pull off the quietest coup in the history yeah. of the cosmos. That's amazing. He's like Danny Ocean mixed That's with all of. Yeah. He's had all that time to sit there in his prison cell with nothing to do but think, and I'm going he could have you know he could have orchestrated the whole right. thing and figured out oh here's my thing here's how I'll do this and I, right. and it and it works it, it doesn't have to be that but i'm saying you could argue that that's what it was all done yeah. but i don't i don't think he's it's not really i i wouldn't say he's the uh, well the star? The, no because really he's there as a plot device for the third movie right. more than anything of well but so uh, one thing that we do be know, our, one thing we do know about the character mm-hmm. for for at least a fact as of yeah. today is that th- that character is not going to be in the Avengers. 
Right. So we know that they are going a new route, a different villain. Now it's not saying he can't end no, up. No, he'll in, probably be in. But what do you think? Three. Like Avengers, but, Avengers, just in general, wasn't necessarily about him either. No. But it's what people remember. Right. Yes. So it, you know, you yeah. can get any other villain. Oh, he has sure, like, yeah, sure. And that's what you're gonna walk away yeah. with. Um, in terms of the other cast, I really liked uh, Kat Dennings. I thought she, she oh, brought she's a nice she's comic relief. Right. Yeah. yeah. She's great. I mean, the, the fact that, I mean, these actors are, I mean, they're kind of known for comedy to a degree. I mean, w- what I liked was there was, on Earth, there's a lot more comedy, mm-hmm. especially because you have Kat Dennings. And then on um, in, in Thor's world, it's a lot more serious, and especially because yeah. you have Anthony Hopkins playing right. it. He's not yeah. going to do it. <laughs> Idris Elba comedy. really isn't known for his comedy, but. You, know. <laughs> you never know. Yeah. <laughs> So, so I like that aspect of it. I mean, yeah, uh, I don't. I, I know the first movie was funny, but I don't remember it being that funny. And then when mm-hmm. I saw this again, and obviously with Iron Man and, and uh, Robert Downey, you yeah. know, I really love that aspect of it. That is just p- enjoyable in it's that a, sense. Yeah, and the first movie. I mean, I, I did watch the first. I watched the first movie like you know hours before watching Thor: uh, Dark World, and the first movie actually is really funny. Um, they have again because the the first movie is such a fish out of water story. We were talking about you know the scene. There's a scene in the first movie where they're at a diner, and mm-hmm. you know there he's drinking the coffee and he's like, "Oh, I love this beverage. Get me another." And he throws it to the ground, and they're like, "You know, you can just ask for it." He goes. I thought I just did. Like, he doesn't know these norms. And then there's that scene in the hospital where he's like, I am Thor, God of, and then they eject him. And he just, like, flops down. The fish out of water tale and him learning what humanity is all about, well, that's a major part in that story. But I think the humor really works, and it works organically. Uh, And I think in in this movie, too, the the humor works organically between the characters. Like, you, you had that great... You know, that great thing, like, you were in New York? She, she goes, you were in New York, and you didn't even come by to, 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 to see me? Giant and he's like, and he goes, I was saving the world. And she's like, okay, that's a good excuse. And she just like, well, like, it's a great line. And, you know, and then when she comes up to Loki, and she goes, that's for New York. And he, he just smiles. He's like, I, I like, like her. I like her. Yeah, <laughs> you know? there are those lighthearted and, moments. Oh, uh, the scene where, where uh, Jane's on a date. Like yeah. that's a great scene, and Kat Denning shows up. That's, that's a really funny scene. It's no, he's there as a like runner that. too, because she keeps keeps See interrupting that. things right. the whole time. Or, or <laughs> the, sim- the simple See moment that. when uh, Thor is at the apartment and he just hangs his hammer, hammer. onto yeah. the oh, that's the audience. Awesome. Those <laughs> simple little moments that but are funny that make to us. Sense? Does it make sense? What and how? Yeah. Those are some really strong nails to carry that big old hammer on the wall. Nay, nay, you you are. It's it's only heavy to those who try to lift it. Is that yeah. what it is? Yep. Yeah. But what about if it's placed on you? You can't move. Yeah, I know. Because, because that was in the saying. first one, yeah, right? So I'm he just put it on Loki at the end of the tour. So because the it's first human one. contact, that makes it heavy. The contact of anything, it's not. Well, it's it's heavy to, if I went to try to take it off that stand, I couldn't mm-hmm. do it. Okay. But it becomes heavy to the energy right. that's trying to grab it right. or whatever it is. Rather than I'm glad that was clarified. Be, yeah. I'm very glad that was clarified. Mm-hmm. So I was like, mm, you have to she be has worthy. Very strong mm-hmm. shelf. Yeah, <laughs> but that's it. But 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 to Marissa's point, it is such a simple thing. Yeah. And he just walks in without even thinking about it. Oh, there There's you go. It's like hanging a hat. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, a lot of a lot of very funny moments in this show. So I appreciate yeah. it. Um. Let's see. What could, it, there's so many ways you can kind of dissect this. I mean, in terms of the overall notion, the concept, right? That the kind of everything aligning and how it played. Obviously, like we've been left clues throughout our history. Mm-hmm. You know, oh, uh, you know, the walls, the and, and right. all these different kind of anything that's uh, that we haven't been able to explain in any kind of and by the way, it ends up scientific. Being, let's figure it out. Yeah, yeah. let's and, use it. And by the way, it ends up being Greenwich. Which yeah, is funny, <laughs> Greenwich Mean Time. <laughs> This, <laughs> I love this right, movie. Right. I've said I love this movie. I do. Mm. My biggest or the my critique of it is that so much of the plot relies on very large coincidences. Mm. Right. Like normally films will use like Oops. one coincidence that yeah. moves things along. This uses like twelve coincidences. <laughs> well, like, they're all aligning. Like, like they all align and they all align <laughs> in Greenwich, which luckily yeah. they can get to. Mm. Um, the worlds are like getting these portals. But randomly, she goes into the one that leads her to the ether. And then randomly, they walk into the exact cave Mm -hmm. where the keys are on this whole planet. They find this one. There's just 
a lot of very coincidences that just they're the driving force well, of the action. Well, and that's the key, though. If you, that's why that's the only way it works is if you just go with the action because you got to go fast over those things so you don't, can't give anybody time to think. Yeah, but you know what, though, I, I think what? you know. But but when she, but they they sort of address it in a sense like when they find that let's call it a wormhole. Yeah. Uh, you know, on Earth, mm -hmm. and they're throwing stuff in it. Mm -hmm. Now, at first, I thought that only metal would like go through because right. it seemed like when they put a shoe in, it never came give back or whatever. Shoe. Yeah, give me your shoe. Give me your shoe. Um, so they they made it a point to see that some things never came back. Mm -hmm. um, so that when Natalie Portman ended mm -hmm. up going, you needed a tether to find to say, oh, because that shoe was so distinct. And you know, you're like, oh, yeah, the keys. Yeah, it's but like, they oh, weren't here I am. in the exact same spot. She yeah. was in a separate cave. Those were two no. different caves on the same planet. How do you know? Because <laughs> it looks, com the other one was buried completely underground where no one could find it. And this one was, you walked from the surface into a little cavern mm -hmm. and it was right there. Um, on top of that, oh, wait, I have something else to say and I can't remember. So <laughs> this is. <laughs> so you, it's a little hard for you to go with the idea that of all the places where they might end up, it's right by the keys. That's tough right. for you to yeah. give. I yeah. can't believe that you and, have a hard time and, with that. And the yeah. phone rings precisely <laughs> yeah. at that moment. Like, oh, and he looks at her in the in some one sort of but here's the inter interstice. And, and, and um, the watchman guy, what's his name? Uh, Indri you just had him. He just had Yeah. Character Did he goes to look for Jane at the one five-hour period that she's not on Earth. If he had looked at any other time, mm -hmm. she would have been fine. He'd be like, oh, she's fine. Mm -hmm. Like, there's just a lot you of know, I understand, but, okay, to, to, the, to the phone thing mm -hmm. in particular, they, again, it, it, they gloss over, as John says, by going fast, but also they, they use comedy. In mm -hmm. this case, right, they bring back the guy yeah. from, right. from the date. And right. so rather than being like, hey, that's weird. No, you're like, you laugh and you're like, oh, my God, it's this guy it's trying to get like, a date. Confuse them mm -hmm. so it, they don't know it's it weird. It is. It's like, it's like, don't pay attention to everything over here. Look well, over here, but, look at a shiny object over here. But this is a point that I, that I make, that I've made before mm -hmm. in, if this were a really shitty movie, mm -hmm. These are the things that I would be picking apart sure. on. Mm -hmm. Like, you, I would just yeah, go, the coincidence, I would right. rely on it. When it's a really good movie, mm -hmm. and again, it's just that age-old question: like, why do we forgive? Because right. those are valid exactly. points. But why do we forgive these things? We forgive them because, a, to your point, it was used as humor. It's mm -hmm. funny. It moves the story yeah, along. Yeah, it's certainly entertaining, and you it's can forgive it. But I, I always go to this. I go, yeah, but it would have taken you ten minutes to figure that out. Uh huh. To, to come up with something even more clever and better and make sense. And then nobody would be having this discussion. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, it is seriously. You, how many times have we been in the room going, oh, "What are we gonna do? What are we gonna do?" And, and it takes about ten minutes to figure something out. I go, "Oh no, that works." And yeah. it's and that's what drives me crazy about this kind of thing. We just kind of go, "It's it's it's too easy. It's too facile." If they had it just taken a half a second for to put all the effort into everything else, and you let that one slide. Well, granted, but but she brought up, I, like I said, I think Sarah, you br you brought up a lot of good points. To me very forgivable because if they worked if, if if they worked for the better entertainment of the movie yeah and mm -hmm. you need to move this movie along um it worked if it worked for a comedic effect where it didn't mm -hmm. even make me think about it mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm i'm okay with it it's it's all right but if they had the movie uh, had the only other i'm saying major flaws, i'm not okay with it it would have been better sure had they done it better yeah That's all no I'm saying. Uh, I'm not, I, you know, they they were smart in how they did it. It was entertaining. It was fine. All, all all the ways that you normally would go, okay, we have a whole right. plot problem we have. Sure. How do you get through it? Go through it fast or make them laugh. And that's yeah. how you get through them rather sure. than to actually come up with something that but makes sense. Again, can you imagine if this were a really like oh, yeah, then they would, they, yeah. They, then, then they just kill them they on would, it. Yeah. Yeah. Then they, like, they stand out like a sore thumb. <laughs> and, you know. See, well, and this one kind of stood out. I think so, too. Well. He's <laughs> in agreement. Yeah. What was your other one, Sarah? <laughs> well, that's, a, that's, that's one out of the I'll 12. Get, give I'll us give the other one. I'll give one more. There, there are Okay, what well, was the other one? Um, and I try to rationalize them. I really do. Like, for instance, <laughs> <laughs> like, you don't understand. Like, I was such a fan of this movie that, like, I looked things up to try and make them make sense. Uh -huh. Um, for instance, why do they keep falling into the world of the Dark Elves? Why mm -hmm. is it every portal leads to them? Yeah, I was that's like, that. Maybe it's closer. Like, in the Nine Realms, maybe they, like, border each other. Because, like, why does every cave on both 
not every, mm-hmm. but no, but they're only going between the on two worlds. Asgard and the one on Asgard yeah. when Loki goes yeah. through, instead of it taking him to, to Earth, right. where it took him the first time, mm-hmm. or where, no, it took him to Frost Giants the first time. Mm-hmm. Instead of that, we bypassed that, and it all of a sudden took them to, um, guys, I'm totally blanking on planet names That's right, right now, but it takes them to the same planet. And the two portals in London take them to the same planet. They all go to this one place. What about the seven other realms? Well, I I, I think that I think it was set up too that that dark world. Um, um, but the thing is, Earth the, in the right. tree, Earth is in the center, and then the three right. higher ones in like the leaves of the tree are you like a diagram. Do you have a diagram? <laughs> I do have a no, diagram. But, but I think the point yeah. of that is that there were plenty of other worlds they could have gone to and they didn't. Those and will be the next movie. Odd. I mean, again, we are talking about this is Thor, the dark world. Mm-hmm. We have to focus it. I mean, again, I praise this movie for no, playing. But if that's the case, huge... don't bring it up. Don't set it up if you're not going to use it. Right? Yeah, who says you're not going to use well, it he, in Thor I didn't three use it in and... this movie is my point. No, if you're gonna, if you don't he, set he it didn't have to, I don't think. I think, again, because it was otherworldly and they did even attempt to go to the other world, I think to me that that works because most of the times they're going to stick the superhero on Earth mm-hmm. to save Earth in one way, shape, or form, and this was bigger. So it, it, it also, I mean, it's already sparking debate within us, right? Mm-hmm. And so, uh, yes, is it a plot hole? But it also opens up. I mean, how many fan forums and mm-hmm. discussion mm-hmm. boards yeah. are just <laughs> going on about this, right? So it keeps it in the consciousness sure. of the public. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that's a huge also, benefit. They did to the use movie. the alignment as you. a tool for, like, we we talked about how they do give these, like, little goodies to people who are really mm-hmm. big fans. If you look at the specific worlds they do show at that end scene where you're looking up at the sky at the alignment, mm-hmm. the ones they focus on actually tell you quite a few things um, about the past, about what we've seen in this movie, and about, I think, what they have opportunities for in the future. Like, they do throw in little. And what snippets. is that? I'm interested. I don't know now. if I'm allowed to say it. Oh, why? Like why? What do you mean you're not allowed to say? What do you mean you're not allowed to say? This is a according to the CCC. Who's, who's keeping you quiet? Yeah. No. We're supposed to be and dissecting to here. Wait, and we're supposed to be spoiler rich. Fine, spoiler rich. Go ahead, so spoil. One of the worlds that you do see is this realm of fire. Mm-hmm. Do you guys right. remember yes. that? Yes. Yes. Bright uh-huh. red? Absolutely. In the comic world, or in. That is another struggle for Thor is this, I don't know how to describe this. Um, Basically, some people are trying to fill the world with darkness. Mm -hmm. Some other people might be trying to fill the world with fire. So if Loki's not the center because he's made Thor, you know, who knows, a horrible person who's gone against the crown for treason, it could be also that other realm in the sky. That's all I'm going to say. Interesting. It's a fiery antagonist. Maybe fiery. it could be a fiery antagonist, right. or Loki, or both, as they did mm. in this one. <laughs> yeah, could be. I mean, here's the speculation. I want to talk, let's talk about the villain of this movie. Mm-hmm. By the way, great casting, but almost undiscerning. Like nothing. What do you mean? As far as nothing. We haven't even yeah. talked about the villain. About we're talking exactly. about Are we talking? Well, we're talking about Loki or Malekith. 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 Yeah. Uh, because he's, you know. Yeah, I, they didn't do it. Well, great job of really um, they, fleshing that character out. They cut out a lot. Mm-hmm. That That is one of the things the director was really unhappy about. I'm yeah. sure you heard mm-hmm. about this as well. Um, that they had filmed a lot more about him, mm-hmm. about his backstory, right. about his history with Odin's father. Mm-hmm. Like That was a very filled out character. And they had to snip a little bit apart. And I think the audience didn't know why? that. Um, I would have to say length. I, yeah, would have to say. I mean, they do consciously try to make, keep these movies at about two hours, yeah. two ten, two. But is it know? really length, or is it you know going back to the point that people don't like this? They don't, you know, they, they that's a great him. I think yeah, he, versus the, you know, he doesn't have a huge fan base, so therefore let's not spend a lot of time on him. Is that that right? and like okay, so he, he, he you yeah. know, he wasn't fun to look at. No offense. Wow. No, but no. I mean, you listen. I think that's a that's as good a point as length mm-hmm. as maybe they felt, but. You know, when you look at that, when you look at Malekith, I sort of kind of just looked at him. He was he was a big bad mm-hmm. at that, but he was a big bad that moved the plot. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. not so much. I mean, to me, the relationship between Thor and Loki is way more enjoyable. Like, yes, Malekith is going to raise the stakes. He's going to be the guy that 
ultimately they're going to have to they're going to have to stop him because worlds are in danger. Um, so he's basically moving the plot along as the bad guy. So and I was fine with that. You know, I mean, I, I get. You know, I, I I understand what you're saying, and you're and right. I, I, and I'm fine with that, but, you know, usually, um, for he, most times you have a villain, right? They don't spend necessarily a lot of screen time, mm-hmm. but you ask them how long was this person in the movie, they'd be like, oh, they, they were in the whole movie, Cause, because obviously... There's a presence. It, right. Yeah, there's the a presence. Time. Yeah. And this, you, you, you could have replaced him with just about anybody, really. I, I don't yeah. disagree, but... It'd be serviceable, but it wasn't very layered or textured or even full. It just yeah. wasn't. Well, I mean, I think what I'll say is that it does come down to a choice, because you have... Thor, who's the good guy, and you have him who's the bad guy, and you have Loki who's kind of in the middle, you had to, I think that they had to choose between who gets more, Loki Mm -hmm. or him. And guess what? Loki's already been in three movies. He probably will be in more. This bad guy was in one, so we're going to cut him down and make people love the guy who's in more. Just in terms of uh, their their life you know more about Kat Denning's character than you know about <laughs> than Malekith you just and do. it's true that each of them and has a that's, per- that's personality a mm-hmm. yeah, you, you know Anthony Hopkins Odin um, they they everyone has kind of you, you as as John is mentioning a richness to it right, right. Mm-hmm. and even the, even the intern right what's his name Andre they yeah. keep getting it wrong but like yeah. there's a person isn't his name Ian no yeah, that's the point we don't know his name. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we don't he's, <laughs> the he's the intern's See, intern but, but I will say that that it did start off with the Dark Elf prologue. I mean, we got, I mean, for me anyways, I got enough to know about the Dark Elf, the Dark Elf world, this yeah, Malekith. For, and, for me, you I, know, all was I got was story there. I didn't get any character there because, I, and I didn't even know that I needed the prologue, to be honest with you. I could have been fine without it. I don't, I, it didn't really set up enough for me because everything I got uh, that I needed to get learn about it was Do you want me to tell you the scenes that they cut? Uh, yeah, well, no, I'm just saying that they didn't do a good job of showing me a lot of character mm-hmm. uh, moments for uh, Malekith. Malekith. And I think that was, uh, that I think the, the, the movie would have been better served had they done that. That's all. I, I'm interested. I don't know if it would have helped this, but I'm interested um, regardless. I can't think of every single one they cut off the top of my head. Um, I'm sure there's interviews out there if you guys want to look it up. But, for instance, one of them was him, Malekith, reminiscing about using to see his wife and children play, like, on his planet and kind of going through that. And then what happened with with um, Odin's father. I can't remember his name. Odin's father. Um, Odin's father. Thor's grandfather. There we go. Oh, Thor's, Thor's, Thor's grandfather. Grandpa yeah. Thor. Who knows? Um, but where, where that rivalry started, mm-hmm. how they all came to be, and then him like dealing with the grief of losing his family and losing what made him happy. Mm-hmm. So you got to see his fall into lack of morality, I guess. But and it, again, know. like, you know, it'll be great for Blu-ray. I hope mm-hmm. they have a lot of those scenes in for the sake of this movie. Mm-hmm. You know, d- again, it, it comes down to choice. Mm-hmm. You know, it comes down to choice. Like, do we really want to focus on, we have to, we have to make a, we, you know, we've got about two hours to work with. Mm-hmm. And is this going to drag our plot down? Is this going to slow our movie down? Is this going to take us out of what the main mm-hmm. s- crux of the story is, which is, you know, we, okay, we have to save the worlds. We have to save, you know, the worlds. It's, it's reuniting Thor with Jane. It's, it's, it's furthering Loki's story and what, what, what's going on there. And to your point, I think they did make a choice so that, yeah, you know, well, but I think that because Loki will be in the mm-hmm. future movies and Malekith not. And again, it didn't bother me so much. Um, it didn't bother me. I just wanted to bring it up. I, I think, I again, think it was very point. conscious. Uh, it's very, it's very interesting. Yeah. I think that on choice, it was interesting how they chose to make certain like um, Kat Dennis, other smaller characters very filled out mm-hmm. or for instance i really loved uh Frigga in this movie his uh thor's mother mm-hmm. they really sure. gave her a lot of time a lot of yeah. heart they gave and her a really great sh- action sequence amazing awesome. she was incredible she was great. renee russo kicking like, butt yeah not yeah. for her uh, you know that's a lethal weapon lethal weapon four was yeah. It? yeah not since yeah. then have we seen that man nice no, no. she was great yeah it was like renee russo still got yeah. it <laughs> yeah and good, good for her man. but but again like kat denning's character was sort of kind of fleshed out like we met her in the original mm-hmm. thor we knew her position like mm-hmm. it's like um she's the intern she mm-hmm. goes you studied science she's like social science Mm-hmm. Like yeah, she was the best I could get, yeah. <laughs> and you know, and so th- th- those characters, I think it's sort of kind of unfair because we were introduced to them earlier on, mm, and 
you know, so that's why they sort of kind of seem a little more flushed out. They were with our heroes from the beginning. Yeah, but here's the thing. I did not see the first one, so I don't know anything about that. I'm taking this movie as I saw this movie. Right. And I know far more about that character than I do about Malekith. And uh, as, as little time as they took with Kat Denning's character, what was her name? Character name? Uh, give me a second. Anyway, that's okay. Whatever, Kat Denning's. Uh, I knew Darcy way more. Lewis. And I'm saying, I'm not saying they need to have yeah. full on twelve scenes to give me Malekith because they don't need it. They did such a great job with her. They could have done an equally good job with him mm-hmm. with just the same amount of screen time that he already has. Sure. There's a lot of stuff that we just don't need with this crazy. And uh, go ahead. I was just say there is also. I remembered one of the other scenes about him. There's also a lot with him and um, the curse that he creates mm. about that. There's more history there's between. A curse? The, the guy who turns into the huge monster with the like stone thing, mm-hmm. like there's a whole history yeah. there as well. Mm-hmm. Like there's a lot of character that was written that just and was filmed it. that just mm-hmm. didn't get yeah. Didn't I, w- get through. I want to move on to um, kind of the action set pieces, and I want to mm-hmm. start. I want to start the last one because is for me it's we've never really seen this at least that I can remember mm-hmm. where you know you. I loved your kind of going from world to world to world. That was to world. great, and it's hilarious. And then you, yeah, and then you, and then Thor ends up. Uh, hey, where, how do I get the Greenwich three stops? <laughs> how do I get <laughs> right? <laughs> Time wise, uh, you speak of plot holes. I mean, if you have seven minutes and you've already been fighting, there's no way you can get. Yeah, he's not whatever. getting exactly. Yeah. I loved this fight scene. Mm-hmm. I. I loved it just because I don't remember the last time I saw a really funny fight scene like mm-hmm. in my head i was like oh maybe kick ass but kick ass isn't funny. even funny no, like the, the movie's funny but the fight scenes aren't oh no. to me no. this fight scene was hilarious because yeah. all based on the hammer the hammer right. it was like zooming like every which way oh i just loved how it would be flying off earth and then <laughs> <laughs> it was, like zoom off i was, it was laughing great. out yeah it was great or how the beast would get through or how it, he fl- or how um the intern flipped the car mm-hmm. like it was I thought it was really funny. And then on top of that, what they did with the Greenwich stop, first of all, that being interesting and different. But second of all, giving him that time away where he's on the train and separated for, mm-hmm. from Malekith to have him get the switch into right. it being a dark moment and being a serious thing because you needed them to be separate mm-hmm. for that risk to take yeah, hold. Right, because otherwise for, it'd just be exactly. smashing and each other Exactly, if they're smashing, then he, 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 did, he accomplished it. Exactly. it. So to combine the funniness with the, the device ser- mm-hmm. of giving him time. Yeah, and again, it's weird because we're talking about inconsistencies with the script mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but yet at the same time that fight scene uh, to your point they're, they're teleporting through all these different worlds mm-hmm. fight, and i you're i agree with you i haven't seen anything like that and that's part of the story that's part of the script and that's something that was thought out it was very clever it was well done and and i think it goes back to if this was a shitty movie We'd pick apart all that stuff, but because we really enjoyed things like the fight scene, eh, I'm going to forgive that they didn't flush out Malekith because I'm having such a good time watching them going back and forth. And when he stops on the, you know, <laughs> the subway scene's just great. It, it's, it, and, and, and again, it was so easy to do. And it's like, really, he's going to take a subway? But that's just really funny. It's a great it, it, It's funny because of the girl. Yeah. You know, where she, caught, she pretty much <laughs> leans against his chest. Yep. It's a great a little scene. wish fulfillment there for a lot yeah. of ladies. Can but I throw in a little? No, no. Of course you can. Please throw away. <laughs> one of the other, since we brought up plot holes, so I'm going to talk about yeah. it. Um, one of my questions after the film was, why didn't he just absorb the ether right away in like the beginning, beginning, beginning mm-hmm. war? Like, mm-hmm. why was it stored in a rock? And they do address it a little bit. They say that now it drains your energy. And what Odin stole it. They think came down and stole. Yeah, him. but why wasn't he it already Odin, in sorry, him? Father. Why wasn't it already in him, mm. like in his body? If he's going to battle and right, he has this why immense did, power source, that's a great question. I like, don't know. why don't you need it at the very beginning? Because if he did, we would we're have no wait movie. for everyone to die, <laughs> and then we're going to use it. Yeah, um, that's no fun. The only thing I could think of was it does drain their energy or it drains whoever. Clearly, it didn't it. for him though. He, he, Obviously, you know, he yeah. like was. Using it for like a yeah, day, and he was exactly. fine. He could have saved all those people from dying if he just oh, people elves, whatever it is, <laughs> dark elves, dark elves. Thank you. He could <laughs> if he just had it in from the beginning. It would have been maybe a lot yeah. easier. That would have been easier. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Huh? My bad. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that was a little bit of a question. Um, obviously, also that we got that it hasn't been destroyed though, and I liked that element. Yeah. yeah. They couldn't destroy, they can't destroy it. it. Yeah. You can't. And then we got that through 
kind of sporadically placed mm. through the through the movie, and, and then, then it right. was this Thor fluid. proves it at the end. Yeah, he can't really destroy that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he tried. Yeah. yeah, he attempted. He gave it a good shot. Mm-hmm. But, but uh, now again, by uh, for anybody who's keeping count, I think that's three of uh, Sarah's <laughs> plot holes. <laughs> We're gonna get how to many nine did she have? She had nine. She had twelve. Plot holes. Plot holes. <laughs> the countdown. <laughs> Well, there's another one. I would have to say that, though, earlier when I said the phone ringing, yeah. that still doesn't make that, sense. That one drives you crazy. I mean, yeah. I understand it's next to a thing, and maybe the service extends. Like, mm-hmm. I get that. Yeah, it extends to a it different didn't world. Ring at the exact time. Sure, yeah, it's yeah. Verizon. But if <laughs> it wasn't AT&T, that's for sure. <laughs> anyway, right, we'll point. keep going. <laughs> All right. Let's, let's, I'll just interject them so they don't seem as naked. I want to talk <laughs> I really like the film. I want to talk about the cinematography. Um, not that it's very different from the first Thor, but I, I like how, um, you know, we kind of put this more into the, you know, we, we've talked about the different worlds and, you know, now we're kind of in, in the UK and things like that and we're going every which way. Mm-hmm. And so, again, it just makes everything feel that much bigger. And I think to the, to the fans of the first movie, as they've critiqued it, you know, it felt kind of small. Right, everything. Uh, this film? No, the first the, okay, one. Okay, gotcha. Okay. To whereas this one obviously yeah. opened up. Oh yeah, they opened their canvas. You know, and, and so yeah, while yeah. the actual shots themselves, you know, it, you've had, right, you have me- wides, mediums, right. and all that. So mm-hmm. you, comparatively, yeah. it's about the same. But um, but this one just has more locations. It feels it feels richer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and I think that's the route that they had to go. I mean, <clears throat> you had to make it bigger, and since we've already had. Everything that led up to the Avengers basically took place on Earth. Mm-hmm. And again, I, I really enjoyed the fact there were so many. I'll make the comparison. This movie succeeded where a movie like Green Lantern failed miserably. And no, because Green Lantern is, is he's a space cop. And basically he is out in outer space. And we and they just had no idea what they were doing with that character, where they would make it plausible, believable, or even have have it make sense. And Green Lantern is such a great character. You have a wonderful, beautiful sandbox to play in, and yet they didn't do it at all. Where Thor, I think, really... You're right. It is much more epic than the first one. It's bigger. It's, it is, it's an expanded universe. For those who aren't familiar with the comics, we get this other world we 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 get to meet these new characters these these elves these uh dark elves and you know you have to go that way and why not when the character that's where he lives and you know the cinematography kramer morgenthau i believe is how you pronounce it he's worked with alan taylor before and he works you know and one of the things he's worked on is game of thrones Mm -hmm. And when you look at game of thrones i mean that that show is very epic in scope and that not just one setting game of thrones takes place all over the all over the place and they're able to put it together i actually felt that this movie because of alan taylor and perhaps the cinematographer it felt very game of throne ish where you had different plots going on at different places and it was all about bringing it all together and uh, and I think it really worked. And also this guy Kramer, he's also worked on shows like Sleepy Hollow. Like he mm-hmm. he, he DP'd, um, uh, yeah, he D, he DP'd the pilot for that. So he has a sense of how, how to film something, how to make it look great. And I think that Thor, I think this movie was really, <clears throat> I think it's one of the reasons that I could enjoy it more is because it, it brought just another level. As a moviegoer, mm-hmm. I didn't have to read the comics but as a moviegoer, I was introduced to something new, fresh, fun, and exciting. So cinematography totally made it seem epic. Yeah. I mentioned earlier that I just really like how they display um, Asgard, like their whole world. Yeah, that's cool. And I would say that it's because of, like the detail they put in and the effort they put in. And I think that they do, even though we only see the other worlds for little bits, the ruin that you get off of the home of the frost giants and the ruin that you get right. off the home of the dark elves you really do feel it they feel like desolate wastelands yeah, absolutely. and but they are very also distinct from their colors from anything you know where you are the moment you get there and well, i like did that. anybody see this speaking of like anybody I, I was fortunate i saw this in imax 3d mm-hmm. and i actually thought that you know especially in those planetary scenes i thought i thought the imax w- worked in this movie mm-hmm. Um, did anybody else see it in IMAX 3D? 
because you all, if you didn't, then you missed a great five minute Captain America uh, scene before the movie. They showed a great preview of Captain America, but only in IMAX. We, we, we got a preview that, of, of Captain America. No. We also got Captain America in the movie. Just a couple times. Oh, that was a great. <laughs> Again, comedy, mm-hmm. great comedy with Loki. Yeah, that was a great yeah. scene. But to to, to the uh, to Asgard though, yeah. um, in terms of that, I was reading how how it's much easier. You know, now as they do it, it's easier to just build upon it. Right, the first time they have to build from scratch. Mm-hmm. Now mm-hmm. they can build upon. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so you're gonna get much more richness and things yeah. like that. Yeah. You, you know, and so that's really cool to see, and that's why they can do this, and that's why. You, Obviously, they went to more locations and they kind of expanded it, but also just the ones that they already had to use, they built upon, and yeah. that's what you're saying. Yeah, and that's smart for a sequel. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and you right. have to. You have yeah. to. Keep... But I was really impressed with the production design and the art direction, especially at Asgard, because I, again, I had never visited there. I didn't yeah. see the first one, so when I first showed up, I was like, "Whoa, yeah. nice! Like, this is wonderful." It was amazing, and the way you it's described it, really so I would wonderful. completely agree with you on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah and I, I think uh, you know, I would if I was. Um, the production designer who you know whoever kind of was making that decision as you described it um from lord of the rings i would have absolutely been like hey th- you know this is what we need to model right you know i felt like there was this is a side note but did anyone else feel like there was a lot of moments from lord of the rings in this because for me well, lord yeah. of the rings was in one of my ears oh, really? yes maybe you had elves you had i had elves <laughs> brought axe i had a hand getting yeah. chopped off yeah. i had like my alternate gimli yeah, i was yeah. like I was quite kind of had orc like people. This, I had this like, deal of like yeah. immortality with humanity, mm-hmm. or he's not immortal, he lives for 5,000 years, whatever. They never, although they never really addressed what's going to happen. Like every time we get a story Number four. about an ageless, <laughs> no, about like a relationship or love interest that yeah. their challenge is some sort of age world problem <laughs> it gets talked That's about <laughs> this one doesn't get talked about it's talked about by his dad who's like she's gonna die it's a blink and eye but they never come up with any solution for it they never talk about it mm-hmm. it like doesn't seem to matter well, he, well he'll have her until she's dead and then he'll find yeah. another suitable so mate she, he's gonna look like that <laughs> and she's gonna be 80 and it, they'll be great yeah he's sure. be like, you but look the, great, there's honey. no solution Good. so you know uh, yeah. nothing, nothing we can do about it so, <laughs> so yeah. we're just gonna deal with it yeah until oh, okay. Natalie Portman's contract's up and they have to recast. Or and until then they, can they go, go hey, the... you're different. <laughs> well, they're kind of already looking at that. I mean, I don't, again, I, it, since it hadn't seen the first one, I don't know who, what the relationship is between Sif. Thor and, yeah, because what, because they Sif. were really pushing that They along. really played that this, yeah. this so one. I, I think, that I, I thought for sure that's where they were headed. That's why I, I was saying. I think she's going to end up with Loki. Interesting. Really? Sif. That's okay, what, what makes you say that, though? What was um, I, think, I don't know. I think they're a cute couple. <laughs> 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 um, okay. No, right. I just they had a lot of moments together too, and mm-hmm. honestly, I felt the chemistry more between them. Maybe it's as people, maybe it's as actors, mm-hmm. but um, it was very short glimmers from. And one of them was like her threatening Loki, mm-hmm. like I'm gonna kill you if we betray him. The other mm-hmm. one was Loki, pr- th- Loki sh- coding. Uh, Thor with an image of Sith and mm-hmm. walking side by side, mm-hmm. but in their like very brief things together, I felt a lot of chemistry between mm-hmm. them. So I that's where I'm thinking it's gonna go. No, well, we should talk about that actress because uh, mm-hmm. it was that uh, Jamie Alexander is that her name? Uh, you know, she's. I mean, I think she had more of a role in the first movie. Uh, you know, actually, the Warriors Three had a little bit more of a role in the first movie than they did here. And I think if you know, if I'm gonna critique. I would have liked to have seen a little bit more of them because they're great um, together. But, you know, I I thought, see, I didn't see the relationship between she and Loki. I I thought that they were trying to set up almost that triangle. I thought they were trying to set up the triangle, too. I just didn't think it was working. And I thought I saw a relationship between her and Loki. (laughs) Yeah, I just never thought that. I mean, he's going to go back to Jane. He's just going to, you know, that that's who it is. And he, you know, again, I don't know how much time he's going to end up spending on Earth. And so, you know, we can explore that, you know, later on. But by the way, it's, you know, I don't know if this was planned, but um, I think it was about two weeks ago. Jamie Alexander um, went to some red carpet. I forget what it was, but it it almost made international news. Oh, yeah. She rocked that dress. Yeah. And I think that was just on purpose. That was just great. You know, and and don't wear that by accident. No. It's not like I tripped and fell into it. It fell on me. And knowing the. the, the, Sarah, uh, Sarah, what were your thoughts? 
just the moment when you're on panel with like three guys and you're like, I'm okay, not going to bring up the fashion. Oh, wait a minute. You brought up the fashion. We weren't bringing up the fashion, oh, honestly. Wasn't it, wasn't about the fashion. it really wasn't about the Whatever. fashion. It was about so the lack of fashion Whatever. in certain places. It's just, okay, <laughs> it. Thor I was the one who brought this up. The core demo was going to be males. Mm -hmm. yeah. That was a treat for the males. Absolutely. Okay. And some of the females. Okay. <laughs> Why? What were you gonna say? You gonna oh, I, say? Was, I wasn't gonna bring it up. Do you even know? You know the photo, though. Right? I know which photo you're talking about. Yeah. Okay. Black dress, lots of cutout things. Well, and then uh, lots really of sheer. Yeah. yeah. It was. It was sheer. Oh, was if you haven't seen Boy. this and you're listening to us, pause. Take a moment. <laughs> Look it up. Then come back to us in twenty. Yeah. Okay. 20. <laughs> There's lots to share so about. So I'm guessing you guys are fans of her. You want that love interest to happen. Honestly, I, did. Well, I, 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 I hadn't seen the picture, so I don't really know what you're talking about. But Maybe uh, computer up. Go ahead. Bring no, no, it's fine. Fine. Don't really get it. No, it's worth it. That it's I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm gathering what it is. Um, anyway. You. you know, and listen, well, you, you know, I think that you have Natalie Portman. You got to keep that relationship going for as long as you, you know, for as long as yeah. you can. Um, and I think, you know, the other thing, too, is the two of them work together. I think the chemistry between Hemsworth and Portman really worked mm -hmm. very well to make that relationship, you know, wherever they decide to go with it. But it's it's a it's a good, fun relationship. And he ought, obviously, like from the first movie where he really learns about humanity and mm -hmm. coming back. And, and you can tell because it's brought up many times when he's on Asgard and he's being asked constantly like oh you're still thinking about her mm -hmm. he's like oh no 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 I'm, you know but but we know that he is and we're trying to pull up the picture oh, oh yeah oh it's gonna be but it's, it's so gonna, explicit it's we can't even put it up on screen <laughs> well, the tv's oh blocking it <laughs> yeah it's, i'm gonna try to figure out it. what else can we talk about guys okay no we can talk about well we can talk about alan taylor yeah, as, a, as a director i mean you know he, the first one was directed um by um uh, now I can't think of Kenneth Branagh. Kenneth Branagh. Yeah. Kenneth Branagh. Mm -hmm. And again, when you're putting <laughs> getting Kenneth Branagh to direct a movie about a Nordic god, you're like, wow, okay, I've never seen him do this kind of a movie before. Yeah, it's an interesting choice. choice. Yeah. When you watch the movie, it's like, oh, you know what? This sort of kind of makes sense for me. It did. I mean, it was very Shakespearean, and mm -hmm. and the way that he paced the movie, filmed the movie, shot it, it was great. A lot of humor. So now that you're going into your, he, he already said he wasn't going to do the next one. Right. Mm -hmm. So what do you do? And if you're Marvel, what do you do? And you, you sort of kind of, I don't you you want to save money. So what do you, so you get a guy who's familiar with directing, but this is his first feature film. And this guy was an HBO favorite. Mm -hmm. he, he still is. I mean, he's done episodes of The Sopranos, Sex in the City, Boardwalk Empire, and most recently he's working on Game of Thrones. Um, so, so and, I was set up to like this movie. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. it, well, well I mean, but it looks very Game of Thrones-ish. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I talked about that earlier, and apparently they looked at, according to Alan Taylor, they had looked at two other directors right. who had worked on Game of Thrones. So, so they were obviously liking the, not only the look of it, but the, the whole yeah, thing. But, they, and also probably trying to tap into that audience. Yeah, so absolutely. probably a lot of crossover. And, and yeah, and there's a scene that takes place in a great hall and they're celebrating. Mm. And, you know, for, 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 you know, Shining Second, I was like, ooh, no Red Wedding, please. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but it was, you know, the scene was, you know, I thought that Alan Taylor for his first time out mm -hmm. as a, as a, big feature movie director I, I thought he did a really good job i thought he he kept up he kept everything going and you know he worked well with marvel and and he did great with the characters and the landscapes and the and he filmed the action sequences going back to that action sequence that is one hell of choreography mm -hmm. to yeah. be and you you're filming this in different settings different places and you know you got to know what you're going to want so I just think, yeah, he did a first time. I think he did a great job. I agree. I I thought he did an excellent job. Um, I I we both know some of the same things. So for those of you who didn't stick around for the credits or after the credits, we got two additional clips. So after the movie ends, where he's like walking <laughs> out on Loki, you go through about half the credits, and then you get a glimpse of which one came first. I'm sorry, say this again. Which clip came first? The collector? We got the collector clip was first and Thor coming to Earth 
was at the very, very end of the credits. So there was yeah. two things you guys had to stick around for. The Collector was actually not shot by Alan Taylor. Correct. So that's why I wanted to bring it up. Um, Alan Taylor did the whole movie, and then he did the very, very final clip where we got to see, actually, for, sorry if you guys didn't see it. Um, we got to <laughs> well, you should have. This is what you know. Yeah, we got yeah. to see Thor and Jane reunite and kiss and then yeah. you got a nice comedic moment yeah. where the frost giant monster that <laughs> fell into London is still in London. Yeah. yeah. And it's chasing, uh, chasing around that birds, same parrots, yeah. thing of birds that's <laughs> going everywhere. So you get wow. a nice little note and and that was done by him. But the middle one, the collector, right. where we get to kind of find out that the ether are is the ether is still around. Um, and also that there's not only the ether and the Tesseract, but there are I think four. five. I think there are four other because I don't yes, think five total. Total. you're talking about Six right. total. No. Because he said I have one now five to go. And he has the ether, okay. but he doesn't have the tesseract in the four unknowns. Okay, so I believe. I could be minter that wrong. I mean I can get I mean I have the because Infinity like Stones? Yeah, I have um well should we talk about who's the collector is this important? Yeah, okay. Yeah, for, well the short answer according to this is he's basically an eccentric rich guy who collects things and some of those things are alive. Uh the long answer is he's re a ridiculously powerful being who spends his time collecting curiosities from around the galaxy. You get a quick peek at his menagerie at the end. Um, in the original comic books, the Collector was one of the several hugely powerful galactic beings known as the Elders of the Universe. Uh, the character was introduced throughout the 60s, 70s. Uh, not coincidentally, this was uh, roughly the same time period when several Marvel writers discovered LSD. <laughs> so, um, now the Infinity Stone. Mm -hmm. uh, f uh, uh, fanboys here, know that this is a tip hat to Thanos. And Thanos is going to be our big bad. Sounds very Avengers. great, Thanos. Mm -hmm. Panos, Thanos, Thanos, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's my cousin. He owes me money. Okay. Uh, he's the big purple guy introduced at the end of the Avengers mm -hmm. during the okay. mid-credits. So if we saw the Avengers. And there's also an Infinity Gauntlet right. that is also shown in this film, which is one of the Easter eggs. And, and again, though, yeah. I go back to when I was talking about what Marvel cleverly and wonderfully does is interlace these things because their goal marvel's goal right now is getting to avengers 2 mm -hmm. and yeah. how are we going to exactly. do that but again yeah. if if you didn't stay for the credits like mm -hmm. this is what's great about it i didn't need to know anything about an infinity stone or no, i didn't I know mean, i didn't need to know who they, the collector is well, the, or, on the first right. iron man they ended up with the uh, the hammer and the right and so and you didn't need to know that no to and, but i love the way they keep doing it that's great because yeah. i know that by the time the avengers 2 comes rolling around you know i'm i will have i they, it's going to educate me enough that mm -hmm. i know what's going on in the avengers and I didn't necessarily have to pick up on what the Affinity Stone is. You know, it's great for the fanboys, like we said. Uh, but I'm just trying to see if it says how many there are. And basically, Thanos gathers six Infinity Gems, powerful objects which together form the Infinity Gauntlet. But we're talking about those are the gems. The Aether can't be a gem because it's fluid. Well, the e correct. Yeah, and the, there's a difference oh, between the Tesseract geez. being an Infinity Stone versus the gems versus... Sorry, this is no, sorry, no, 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 but but, but 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 the difference between the ether and the tesseract, because I have that as well. The tesseract can control your minds, and it opens portals to other dimensions. Whereas Damn. the yeah, and it blows people up like real good. <laughs> uh, the ether can bring uh, it, it brings darkness. on the darkness, yeah. and and be from before our reality into reality in a cloud red, uh, and it's also extremely powerful and then so, there, and just to think that travel. these are two of them and think about how many more yeah, we yeah. have in their abilities it opens quite a few doors which is fun yeah so you know uh, oh but my point of bringing this up was that alan taylor did not direct the collector clip correct and from the sounds of it doesn't the way i read the quote uh -huh. he doesn't seem very happy, happy. with oh, it really? or so oh. which this and the reason i found that really interesting is because when i was watching I felt like it was coming out of left field. Mm. Not only was it a new character and all this stuff, but it just felt different. Uh -huh. I, I I felt like you could almost tell it was from made. By Why didn't else. he do it? Let me. I don't know. 
I cannot question. tell you that. Um, that would have been a great answer to know. Yeah, Maybe yeah. because. <laughs> why, why are you bringing it up if you don't know the answer, huh? <laughs> I'm sorry. I wasn't expecting. Okay, all well, these speaking questions. of something you don't know the answer to, let me let me bring this up. There there have been uh, some scuttlebutt about the fact that ne- since the Avengers has already happened, ma- I mean, I should say the mo- movie's mm-hmm. already come out. We, we've seen all these characters come together, obviously Iron Man and, sure. and everybody else. Is it? Does it seem? Because there are there is a whole uh, group of people that are going. Well, if he's back on Earth and he knows the big things happen, why isn't he calling his buddies to help him? Well, because Natalie Portman's a scientist. I know, but I, mean, I know it. he can't. I mean, he can't because the movie's about Thor. I get that part of it, but you know, I was just. It's, it's a it's weird thing now that it, the the Avengers have been created. Correct. Anytime something happens, then wouldn't you think Maybe. this thing's going to destroy the, universes? The Avengers and they don't. No, but the, the Avengers are brought in when it's like really bad and dire. This is going to destroy the universe. No, but it doesn't get any worse. It's going to destroy Earth. It's going to destroy it. That's my point. Yeah, but, but it can't it, get any worse. It can. How? how? <laughs> it's going to destroy like Earth too. and universes. We, yeah. When you 12, have, was we, it 12 worlds? I'm with when you, you have because characters I'm a big fan of health. That can, yeah. But, yeah, but Thor again, is, it's it's the same mm-hmm. it's the same reason how Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman can exist individually in their worlds mm-hmm. and then they have to they have to get together for the justice league you know i get that but it doesn't but get any bigger than this how how, how does it what you're gonna kill a 13 universes this is i mean no. it's not I, but but it's not the avengers it's not the avengers by the way the, the avengers, to, avengers last the in the avengers movie they came together for this which wasn't anywhere near as bad as this dark world thing oh i think for earth for I think, exactly for, but right. earth was going to be destroyed in this one and they right. came together yeah, in that one. This is a uh, Thor handled it. He didn't need them. I mean, but but I mean, it, again, he you know when you if you're going to be bringing together like the Hulk, like you you don't need them for this particular story. Like, and that, he's not going that, like that. Just defies logic you, you to don't, all you, end. The only it, thing not, I not from say, a superhero. The world. only thing I could say is that we had such a short amount of time right. from him on Earth is that because. Um, He's trapped on this other planet until they find the magical cave yeah. that gives him the portal that goes back. Mm-hmm. And then, luckily enough, they're close <laughs> enough to Greenwich to get there within, know. Uh, you know, a couple yeah, hours. That's what I'm, saying. I'm like the only other. I mean, Hulk couldn't have made it because he would have needed. Oh, I guess they have super flying planes. <laughs> that's my point. I'm trying. I mean, I'm and, trying and I'm not saying there. that they should do it. I'm just saying what now that the Avengers Maybe they has just been didn't created. Have enough if you're time. gonna destroy a world, you'd think that hey, uh, hey, buddy, I need your help on this one. I mean, we, I don't know if I can. I mean, Maybe they're it, having I, travel I, issues. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> Maybe there's a storm he was able over to, New York, yeah. and they're all in New York. But he didn't and know they that at the time. Yeah, but because uh, he remember he tried in the other world to get rid of the ethers and he couldn't. When they have to, that would give him a clue that maybe I might not be able to. Trust me. When they no, have I to can't go trust up, you on this because it's a logical they, thing. Uh, when they <laughs> have to go up against Thanos, eh, you know, Iron Man ain't going to do it by himself. Like, this is something that is way more galactic than, than, than these nine realms. So, you know, this was a Thor story. And Thor, his, his character ends up, he defends the nine realms. This is part of his job. I get it. it. I understand so, that. I'm not saying yeah. he shouldn't. It's his movie. He has to. Yeah. I'm just saying once the Avengers has been created, it just seems a little illogical to go, okay, I, no, I, I got it on my own. I already tried and I failed, They're, but I got it. They should have just added, this is what they should have done. To make <laughs> Thor the depra- protector of his home realms and do his job and make it his movie, but they should have placed a call yeah. at some point <laughs> in the movie. That would have been hysterical. It could have just been, yeah. it could have been, Sorry, you, know, man, I'm busy. you know what they could have done? They could have been like, Thor tells Mr. Skarsgård, who has a character name, but I'm going to call him Mr. Skarsgård. Eric. Eric. Tells Eric, Eric, you need to call the Avengers and get them over <laughs> here. And Eric calls, and they go, uh, Eric's being crazy lunatic, man. Well, the reason why is... And he hang did, up. Yeah. Then he tried, and they didn't show up because they thought he was crazy. Well, because they, ho- they brought the whole S.H.I.E.L.D. in thing earlier because Natalie says, don't, what are you doing? Now S.H.I.E.L.D.'s going to be... So I'm just saying they brought all that in already, and I'm going, since you brought it in, why... And you've I, brought in the Avengers. Yeah, you've already you've brought them in. You but just then, needed the one phone call. I'm just saying. It was. It seemed like, again, it was just, for me, it was one of those things like, wait a minute. Why did you call your buddies? They've already, you've already done this before. I I, I, I get you can't you. do it yeah, in Thor's I, movie, but you should nod to it. Yeah, I, 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 I think that there are bigger stakes coming up. I I just but that's coming up. I'm not talking about coming up. I'm talking yeah, about this movie. But this is, again, I, 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 you know, my argument is, is that this really isn't, trust me, this isn't big enough. Where the Avengers needed to be called in, but you, you how, know how you, you didn't need. That, but how you do you say that when the first movie they came and, in? It and, wasn't and, as bad. And, guys, 
And yes. without seeing it, I it don't think anyone's. We're winning never going to answer this question. <laughs> it's not going to happen. We're going to leave it to the audience it's to comment on this. Like, what are your thoughts? <laughs> there we go. That's uh, how we're going to settle this. <laughs> hey, Marissa, what are your thoughts? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so Marissa we- agrees <laughs> with who I don't know. Yeah, exactly. Um, I do want to talk about this in terms of you, you know uh, we talked about the editing and how it was able to juggle all these different things so I thought that was really nice um, but in, in terms of post-production work what I loved is um, the composer is really kind of making names for himself so much so that he replaced the, the comic book flipping um, sound effect in the logo <laughs> yeah and it's now his score that was my comic fic effect <laughs> that was uh, Brian yeah, was Tyler that you? I didn't, was yeah that? I'm not gonna do it again. Well, I, I, okay. You have to listen to our podcast. Yeah. <laughs> do it right here. You, you can go. do it right here. Thank you. Nice. Something like that. There we go. Yeah. Nice. I think it worked. <laughs> the two exactly. of us layering. But that, you know, it's interesting in terms of keeping kind of consistent within the Marvel universe to have one guy kind of just compose everything. Obviously helps. Yeah. To that cause. Well, are we talking about Brian Tyler? Yes. Mm-hmm. I mean, well, what else? I mean, I'm. To my knowledge, he had only done Iron Man 3 prior because I believe Alan Silvestri did Avengers and he may have done the first Thor, but I think he he, he was brought on with Iron with Phase but, 2. Yeah, so, and I, but I think he's sticking think, around. Yeah, which is good. I think yeah. he, yeah. you know, he came up with a great, you know, scoring a movie like this is really good and you're right to, for your continuity. Um, one of the things that I really liked about Iron Man 3 <clears throat> was to me the score stuck out like i was like oh that's really catchy yeah. it was it was great it was great you know music for the action brian tyler has been around i gotta tell you for a wicked long time uh he worked on a lot of early Lionsgate films um it was, and he's the guy does uh movies he does features uh i mean not features he does video games and tv he, he speaking of sleepy hollow he scored Sleepy Hollow. He's also done Assassin's Creed Black Flag. Uh, he did Now You See Me. He's done Fast Five. He's done a Call of Duty. He did Star Trek Enterprise. The guy's been around, and he's in. For him to get to this spot, uh, when you're di- when you're doing movie for a big Marvel movie, yeah, kudos to him. And he's you know you can tell he's getting better and better, and he makes good score. They're comparing yeah. him to the John I mean, Williams just, to the Marvel Universe. Well, I mean, what I have to say is like... That's, a, <laughs> the, yeah, that's that is awesome. an awesome compliment. That's amazing. And it's so crazy when you do get these composers. First of all, I have to applaud anyone who can compose music because it's just such a crazy talent. Um, yeah, I agree. But to do so much and all in the same genre, kind of, and make them different and make them fit the music without repeating and always being creative on, on your toes about it... Um, is impressive and if he can keep doing it and really become as you said the john williams, williams of, of the marvel, marvel universe, universe yeah there we go title that's good for him like that's that quite is, a legacy to leave exactly Absolutely. that's like a goal you know these movies again i can't point to one yet that ugh, that was awful you know and i think that they're going to be smart enough <clears throat> they'll continue this legacy that we you know we'll end up in phase three phase four and you know i mean they they understand that they have plenty of material to mine from which i hope at this point that dc understands what they have because they have so much to mine from as well and you know it's weird because i don't know i guess a question that we can ask is how do we compare this to the to the dc movies and in all honesty how many dc movies do we have to compare it to we have the Dark Knight trilogy from 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 Christopher Nolan. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have Spence. Man of Steel mm-hmm. just recently. Uh, we have Green Lantern. You know, I mean, we can go way way back to the Batman with Michael Keaton and such. But you know, Spider-Man? Marvel, oh, Spider Man's right. Marvel. My bad, guys. Sorry. You know, and and even e- even the Dark Knight trilogy, Nolan took from certain you know was inspired by certain of uh, by certain books. For sure, but they, you know, once he said he was going to be done with his three, that was it. And now that they've made Man of Steel, they've made the conscious effort, like they've hired a new Batman, which is Ben Affleck, and they're going to go yet again a different route with their characters. Um, but I think they're going to try to copy the Marvel um, blueprint for what they've done because they've been so successful at doing it. So, you know, hopefully 
you know, it, the DC universe has fantastic characters to, to I just hope into. they don't don't do it at a more rapid pace at the, than they should. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? We don't need an Aquaman next year. We don't need <laughs> like we can slow it no. that we can get to that point. Yeah, no, I agree. So I agree. And you know, but think about how long that would take. I mean, if you did a if you did it, it, was, it was, we had Man of Steel, <clears throat> we're gonna have Batman vs. Superman or Man of Steel two. Uh then they would have to do a flash. Then they'd have to do a Wonder Woman. They would, well, they, they would tried have to, to do, do Wonder you know, Woman like on so, lots of mediums multiple times. You know, I think they, you know, they they actually might try to take that. I don't know what they're going to do, but. I don't know. I mean, here's the thing. If they're going to do it, they better be smart about it. They have to be at yeah. this point because they were lucky with Man of Steel. I mean, they were very lucky with Man of Steel. Love or hate that movie. The movie was a huge success. So they're able to build upon that. But they failed with Green Lantern. You know, Chris Nolan's not making another those three Batman movies are in a different DC universe, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So they're going to have to be very smart about it for them to, they, you know, they want to mine this property. I mean, if you've been, you read the the trades and everything, DC has, has, has moved from New York to LA. And I think part of that reason is, is they want that synergy. I mean, Marvel's out here and they work with Warner brothers very closely. So, you know, it'll be interesting. Be okay. interesting to see. I admit I googled this because I just did because I was like maybe we're missing some movies. Are we movies. gonna get to see that dress? The dress? Oh, I did nah. not find the dress. No. You not didn't find the dress. Did I'm you? sorry. What did you Google? I googled because I was like maybe we're missing some mm -hmm. DC movies and they do have Watchmen and like could they have even? No, Wa Watchmen falls. Watchmen is in its own, own. Well, again. Like yeah. the Watchmen the never. The answer is that they yeah. they separate they their worlds. Well, but they. Not necessarily because the Justice League mm -hmm. has been around like forever. And that's basically the Justice League. The Avengers is the DC version mm -hmm. of the Justice League. Mm -hmm. So, you know, but Watchmen was its well, Watchmen was basically a one shot. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, I mean, let me ask you guys this, you know, you know um, this is more about X-Men uh, in particular. But how do you, you know, how do you count for mistakes that, OK, one movie's done that now, let's say, you know, 10 years down the line, you're like, oh. Really wish we had, for example, with X Men, right? Mm -hmm. uh, X Men First Class, uh, Xavier is now in the wheelchair. In X Men Last Stand, <laughs> yeah. he's not in a wheelchair when he should be in a wheelchair. It's mm -hmm. like, and now they're obviously converging to what is it? Back to the past, the days of the past, uh, days of future's past, days of future's past. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like um, Add in all the words you can. Then it's like, okay, well, if if you're really again, it, it ultimately doesn't matter. Just like uh, it re you know, you can recast people and it happens sure. all the time, but. You know, for me, it's it's a huge pet peeve in that. Yeah, in both I mean, recasts and those little minute details. Well, let me ask you. Yep. Let me ask you this: Did you did you like X Men First Class? Yeah, I love that movie. Yeah, it's really last good. Right? Uh. Exactly. And I think, but, I think, but then how could that be? Because obviously they're tying the two together. So how can you forgive that? And obviously Wolverine drew from X Men last thing. Like they're yeah. doing this. I just they're love going Hugh Jackman, so all of this is fine <laughs> with me. Yeah, no, I mean, <laughs> that's where my look. I, I comes think, in. I think, like to me, X Men, um, not Last Stand, but X Men First Class, was Marvel's way of trying, to, not trying, but rebooting and getting back into X-Men to what it was. I, I think they knew that they had a little bit of a misstep there. Yeah. Um, I also believe that they... But they thought... tied in the mythology of those. Yeah. No, yeah. I mean, so if you're going to redo it, redo it. Mm -hmm. Right. 100%, you know. Yeah. I, mm -hmm. No, I, I understand. I, yeah. I, I hear you. That's the I risk you wait. take, though. That's a huge risk that you take when it you is. do this in, but in this endeavor. Do yeah. you think, though, okay, so... X Men First Class, I think we all loved. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Really so, good movie. so this next one, Days of Futures Past, they get Brian Singer back, mm -hmm. <clears throat> which I think is a big asset. They're going to combine. We, you know, we are going to jump from 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 past to to I think I believe modern day or current day. We get with the some characters. time travel. Yeah, and I think I don't know. I mean, I'm really looking forward to this next X Men movie, not because of uh, Last Stand mind you, but because of X-Men First Class. I think it'll be more in the vein of that movie, even though they're tying in. Where so, it says we're not talking about Thor. We're, we're talking not, about the Marvel well, Universe. We're, we're like, talking about the Marvel Universe, and it, I get it's, it's it. The, but, it's the legacy of all, you know, I, I bring this up as an argument, Marissa, <laughs> because, you know, if, if you want to talk about the legacy, 
you know, and I, we don't know how long this can sustain. You know, obviously it's, you know, at the very least, I think we're going at least till 2020 with all of this stuff. Who at knows least. how much longer? Yeah. And then when you look back on this and, and future generations uh, in whatever medium that they're going to be watching and mm -hmm. or reading you, comics, mm -hmm. you yeah. know, how do you kind of it, it's going to be interesting how this is going to kind of fit There's and, and always what, adjustments. They just adjust. I mean, yeah. and we do it now. They, they're doing it right now with adjusting all the history that's in the comic books and the comic books that contradict each other. Oh, and yeah. You you have to make exceptions. There's going to be a critic everywhere, and you just have to go, I think, for the overall themes and the overall goodness of the movie. I mean, take, for instance, Thor. Um, there's a scene where they're in the dungeon, and you get all of, like, the marauders in the back. And I believe the comic books, those are a certain group of people, but the rights are owned by someone else. So I think it's owned by like X-Men or something. So they change the name of the of the captives or they don't name them at all, but they're still there. There's still hints of it and they just tweak. You just yeah, have to you, tweak to deal with controversy. If you can, I, you know, there aren't enough fingers and toes to say how many times a Marvel universe has been rebooted or a DC universe. I mean, they just went through you know, infinite crisis. I mean, they were always rebooting the comic books and people keep on coming back for more. I think what Marvel is doing is smart is picking out their, their, their stories and how they're branding them and how they're putting them together. Again, a movie like Thor, when I went into it the first time, I didn't, it's like, how do you make this work? And, you know, cinematically, and they made it work, and it, it didn't come off cheesy to me. I bought it. I bought it in this universe. So I think going forward when they do this, you know, for Avengers 2, I can't wait for it already. You know, X-Men, it's weird because you have so many... The, the way that they already started this was X-Men and this Avengers universe right now, that they, they, they're, not, they're not colliding. They're not together. Same thing so far with Spider-Man, although... I believe, if I'm if if I'm correct, Spider Man has made a special guest appearance with the Avengers. Pardon me, but you know he right now too is his own. Except they rebooted. Team. Well, I mean Jesus, they rebooted the Spider Man yeah. movies, and like that wasn't even ten years old, and they rebooted it. So here's I, you, you know, know in terms of the legacy, I would I would like to see this, and I think you know I I applaud Marvel for going into this. I. I and, and I think Matrix kind of wanted to do this, that trilogy, where they want to encompass all different mediums. And I would right. like to see this, right? So where the comic books could enhance the movies, maybe you have cartoons for kids that you know tie Stay into here. some of this stuff, video huh. games, you know what I mean? All these different things that supplement what's, you know, what's going on with the other medium. Did you, know? you catch, by the way, is, you know, it's funny that you say that because the writers of this movie... Did you did you catch that any of that? Um, let me just find them in my notes sure. because they were all people who have worked on the Marvel animated series and in comic books, so they have that mm -hmm. that cross pollination, so to speak. Yeah. Uh, you know, there were three guys credited: Christopher Marcus, Stephen McFeely, Christopher Yost. Now, Christopher Marcus, you know, he wrote Captain Avenger. Um, he wrote the first one. He's writing Winter Soldier. He also has done, like, Painting Gain and Chronicles of Narnia. So here's your screenwriter. You have Christopher Yost, who's written a lot of the animated series. So he's, he's written for the Avengers. He's written for Iron Man. He's written for Fantastic Four. So they're putting together these people, one who may know great screenwriting, and but then another person who's so well-versed in the Marvel Universe that... You know, he can help out with the timeline. Uh, a funny credit, and I think it was in... I think it could have been in Iron Man 3. It was in an Iron Man movie, if you can look it up. But Ralph Macchio got a, a thank you. And he got a thank you because he's a huge Marvel fan and he knows the universe. So they went to him for reference. Wow. So the Karate Kid had import. I mean, this is, again, this is where the Marvel Universe really rocks as far as the movies go. Yeah. I, you know, it would be, I would be shocked, like, when that, you know, I'll be, I'll be very disappointed and let down when, you know, one of those movies comes out and it's a real dud. You know, I, I would be very shocked. Again, I, I sort of have to take Wolverine and X-Men out of that equation because they don't. They didn't integrate them into this world, into the Iron Man or the Avengers world. But uh, within the Avengers universe, well, I'll call it, <clears throat> I'd be very shocked when if they make a stinker. 
I mean, I'm really looking forward to. And I think they're taking another gamble by going with uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Those characters, I mean, have any of you folks read Guardians of the Galaxy? Or, I mean, most of those characters are, are, are they're not human. I mean, one of them's Rocket Raccoon. Like, it's, you're going, that to me is another great gamble that Marvel is taking that, you know, when it works, it'll pay off in dividends. Yeah, and, you know, again, they're creating something, you know, in terms of the legacy, I, I don't think a Golden Globe or Oscar is ever in the <laughs> in contention. They don't care. But they're, they're, they're truly leaving a legacy Absolutely. and an experience for people, and, and that's what I like, to, you know, and and the fact that you have now comic Comic-Con, you know, how big it's getting and things like mm-hmm. that, I think they're really going to create an experiential entertainment. Yeah, and... Yeah. I mean, just a token of it is, for instance, cameos of Stan Lee. Absolutely. I, just, I just wanted to put a nod in there to it. That Stan Lee was one he of was the... In, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, he was in the movie. He was in the yeah. Movie. yeah. Yeah. With the shoes and the crazy. And I love that they put him in an asylum. Sorry, that sounds mean, but... <laughs> <laughs> or like a crazy person. You know what I mean, though? He's like yeah. such an interesting character, and he's obviously done such marvelous marvelous things in the works no of Thomas. <laughs> but the, to have him in that scene, like that's where they put to pick him in. I just like always picture these things in my head, like, oh, we're gonna put you in the mental hospital, <laughs> and they're gonna take your shoe. Well, do you remember his character in Thor? When, when Stanley shows up in Thor, yeah, he's, he's the uh, guy in the truck. He's the guy in the truck. Uh, yeah. They're trying to get the hammer out yeah, of the and ditch, like, and he's got the pickup that they hitch work? it up to. It <laughs> and that takes up the whole yeah. back pedal of his truck, and he just sticks to it. Did it work? He doesn't just get com- <laughs> yeah. cameos. He gets like. Funny, good yeah. cameras. So, like yeah, it. like, yeah, I think the legacy that Marvel is leaving us cinematically, um, I think for, for years to come, I mean, for me, it's just great entertainment. I, I look forward to these movies whenever they come out now. Um, and I love how they release them. So we get Thor now just before the holidays. We're going to get Captain America in the spring next year. And, you know, they stagger the releases enough that it keeps you wanting more and of course you can't like by the time Captain America comes out this Thor will be coming out on Blu-ray uh, so you know it, they, they perpetuate their fandom it just mm-hmm. builds and builds I'll tell you this when it's I like saw an Apple it, iPad absolutely know, like, uh, in, uh, absolutely <laughs> but were there a lot of kids in your audience mm-hmm. when you saw this uh, not mine um, I see movies at like eleven o'clock at night. So, so yes, <laughs> in LA that means yeah. Because but I, there were when I when I saw this, there were a lot of kids, and these kids aren't. I don't think they're reading the comics quite yet. Maybe, but they were, they seem young. But it was like it was a priceless moment. Mm-hmm. The end credits were done. Lights come on in the theater. A kid stands up and he goes, "No!" Like that, and that's what's great about these movies because a, an adult or a parent can take their kids to this. It's a far better movie than taking your kids to 12 Years a Slave, which happened to me. To Captain Phillips, <laughs> oh which happened God. to me. Why would to you take it? The Prisoners, which happened to me. Okay, so it, it's you know, fast. I'm going to get on a soapbox. Don't yeah, ever take your kid take to your a kids. Da- uh, an our house movie that's in a different language that needs to be subtitled if the kid is three years old. So, I agree. I've had that experience. Oh. I'm just saying. All right, moving on. You just shouldn't be taking your kids to these. You know. <laughs> just move, just move, let's move on. Let's move on. You know. No, and, go on. Go on. And, and, and so can we also talk about another thing that Marvel has done too? What else happened recently that was a big major shift? They went from Paramount. Disney bought Marvel. Oh, yeah. Okay. So... When you're talking about integrating in legacy, this legacy is this legacy's forever. I mean, Disney knows this family stamp better than no one. And you know, you've got the theme parks, you've got all this integration that now Marvel in the cinematic world is gonna live on forever. Like, They're gonna well, have a great sci-fi theme park soon. I mean, oh. Marvel, Disney. Oh, they're working on Avatar um, right now. Avatar, the Star Wars, yeah. all this stuff. They got a whole new theme park coming, and each one's gonna be instead of Tomorrowland, we're gonna have Marvel. Land. Yeah, I mean, can you think of better branding for for somebody like Marvel or, or for even Star Wars other than Disney? I mean, that legacy is gonna live on forever and ever. You know, it, it'll be great. Well, unfortunately. I think it's for us time to start wrapping out. Bye-bye. But we will live on forever because we'll be Do doing you these. Do say anything else? 
what's that have we covered thor since i feel like we haven't talked about thor in a couple I, minutes uh, sorry, sorry, i mean here's the thing thor. i know i know no. there's gonna be so many things that fans will be like you didn't cover this you didn't cover that it's imp- we could have 20 hours and not cover everything about this damn, damn movie because there's so many aspects of it and about the so damn many points of universe entry. yeah so you know we, we but chose tell everyone to get oh everyone's already seen it but, but, but that's what makes this fun though right i mean john you said you didn't see the original thor right i did not are you more inclined incentivized oh, that, that to that music to like, is rolling out real yeah. quick. <laughs> Are you incentivized to go back and 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 check it out? Like you gonna, yeah, sure, absolutely. You know, I mean, can I ask? Here's another question. Fair question. Marvel Universe. Who here has seen all of these the the Avengers Universe Marvel movies, starting with Iron Man? I, I, I think I have what, seen yes. mostly multiple yes. times. Okay. Yes. So you know, but will you go back? Are you interested in like you know? Has it? Yes, multiple more times. Yeah. So, yeah, same here. Multiple more does not work. Sarah's a closet nerd. We learn learn something more about her every week. I think it's awesome. I I mean, it's great. Not so (laughs) much a closet nerd. (laughs) 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 I am talking about this quite openly. (laughs) All right. Uh, Dimitri, where can fans find you for more Marvel talk? Fans can find me for Marvel talk, Trek talk, DC talk, any kind of movie talk. Please find me at Anatomy of a Movie. Please. Uh, You're welcome. I'm here, too alongside Dimitri. Uh, I also work at AfterBuzz TV Network, our sister network. So you can find me mostly at those two places. All right. And John, where can we find you? They can't find me anyway. You know that. I'm off the grid. You're off the grid? All right. He's operating like the Hulk. He is. Uh, And (laughs) follow us. Follow us You don't want to make me angry. Movie Anatomy on Twitter, (laughs) Facebook.com slash Anatomy of a Movie. Um, we don't have an Instagram yet. We'll get one soon, I'm sure. Uh, we don't take enough photos of ourselves. Where can they get a hold of you? Uh, anatomymovie.com. Check out our profiles. There's a nice little bio page about each and every one of us. Oh, and okay. guess what? Ironically, there's a lot of other movies that we recap there, too. So anatomyofamovie.com. Check it out for all your favorite movies. See you next week. Hope you're having fun, folks. See you at the movies. Svitek and the rest of the Anatomy of a Movie staff. We would like to thank you for listening and subscribing to the show. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to email or tweet us. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been Anatomy of a Movie.